So uh, at that time also, I was not happy. Uh, I, I had achieved everything that the world says that if you do, you should be happy. I had a great family. Every, you know, everybody was healthy. Uh, I had more money than I needed to, you know, live without working for the rest of my life because I'd been successful, you know, with, with uh, Intel enough to, you know, to, to uh, um, cash in on my stock. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and so, you know, I had everything and I was famous uh, enough to, to, they didn't need any more fame. <laughs> so, uh, you know, what's wrong with this picture? And so it clearly had to do with consciousness. So I, I, on one end, the technical side, I was trying to understand what consciousness is, how can I make a conscious computer? And on the other side, consciousness was what made me unhappy. So I wanted to understand consciousness also to, you know, get a, get a grip on myself. And, uh, um, and it was in this milieu that uh, I had an extraordinary experience of consciousness. Uh, it was spontaneous. It was, it was unexpected, and I would never have expected it. I could have experienced something like that. But in, in short, uh, I experienced myself as the world that observes itself with my point of view. So I was the world observing itself with my point of view which was my identity. How is that possible? You know, on top of that, in that experience, I understood that this stuff that I was experiencing, which was a wide scintillating light that, that felt like love, but a love so intense, so unbelievably satisfying and joyful and at peace, you know, uh, that I couldn't, you know, I couldn't imagine that I could be the source of that love because I felt that love coming out of my chest. And, you know, at one point it exploded and everything was filled with this love. There was me and uh, I recognized me in that love. Uh, and so that, that kind of experience changed completely my perspective of who I am. Before I was, you know, separate from everything else in the world. And now I am the world that observes itself. And uh, my body was, you know, vibrating, uh, like every cell of my body was following the, you know, this experience. My emotions was love, joy, peace. And uh, my thought was, my God, this is what everything is made of. You know, this quite scintillating life is, is stuff, whatever you want to call it out of which everything is made. So in that experience, I realized that my conception of reality, which was the materialistic conception of reality that we all learn at school, could not be right because the value, the truth value of that experience surpassed any truth value of any proof of a theorem or anything that you can do with indirect knowledge. There was a type of knowledge, of course, I can say it, this way now, but at that moment, I couldn't, but it was self-evident to me that that experience told me the truth or as much of the truth that is possible to know as a human being uh, of what was going on. So a form of direct experience that I then experienced again several times later in other experiences, but at that time it was, uh, it was a sea change for me in the sense of who I am and how does this all reality works. Um, and that was the beginning, therefore, of a, of a journey of exploration of consciousness, which took me about 20 years, where I went to various schools of thinking, dif you know, different kinds of meditations, what have you, uh, because obviously you know experience, you, you know conscious by experiencing it. You don't know it by reading books. Okay, that's reading books is fine, but it's not enough. You, you, you need to actually experience because consciousness is what allow you to experience, to know by experiencing. And, uh, and there are several levels of experience of which the most direct is what I described. So, um, so after 20 years of work, it, it was clear to me that consciousness could not be a derivative of matter. It, it had to be fundamental because after all, consciousness is what allows us to know. 
So it cannot be it cannot be explained with anything that is simpler than saying that consciousness exists and is what allows us to know, because everything else is knowing beyond what what consciousness does. So, so there is there is no way to explain consciousness in any you know with particles or what have you because because you know because it's what allows us to know that there are particles or that there are you know forces in nature that there are other things so so consciousness is the foundation must be the foundation of a uh, of what reality is which is of course the opposite of what science is telling us because science is telling us that consciousness started with the brain you know 13.8 billion years later more or less so that's that didn't make any sense to me uh, after that experience. It made sense before, but not you know 40 years ago. But not a, not after 20 years of work on myself, uh, so which is about 12 years ago, um, so or more. So uh, so uh, after those 20 years, uh, that brings us to about 2009, uh, 2008, 2009. I decided that it was time for me to uh, to uh, quit work and dedicate myself to the study of consciousness uh, because it, it became my central, I, I, my, you know, my, the center of my, of my life or my thinking or my, my trying to understand. I realized that uh, understanding consciousness was foundational also for, for all of us, for human beings, because uh, we think the consciousness is an epiphenomenon of the brain. And, uh, you know, my finding was uh, that there was nothing more wrong than that and more limiting to human beings than that. So so I started a foundation a couple of years later and uh, the Federico and Nadia Fajin Foundation to this, for the study of consciousness, uh, scientific study of consciousness. And, and essentially my goal was to bridge, to bring together spirituality, which is the experience of unity of, with the, the universe that we all have you know, sometime in our life, uh, perhaps, and or many of us have, and and, uh, and science, which of course, uh, you know, we know it works when it describes the interaction of matter and, and energy in, the, in you know in this in this reality, in space time reality, but that uh, is not enough, and uh, and so because my experiences told me that there had to be some reality which is deeper than that. Uh, because the reality that we know is the reality of classical physics. It's not even the reality of quantum physics because nobody can see a particle uh, or, or, a, or a field that we can only, those are, you know, abstract notions that allow us to see the derivatives of those, which is what we measure in space and time. And, and quantum physics describe reality using a, a, a space, which is called Hilbert space, which is a, which is a, many dimension space with dimensions that are complex numbers. So it's, it's a completely abstract space that stands for something else, but it stands for something more deeper, more powerful, more profound than what our experience is. So that brings us to today. And, you know, in the last, uh, in the last uh, uh, couple of years, uh, uh, together with a uh, top physicist, uh, uh, one of the top 10 in the world in the area of quantum information, we have developed actually a theory of consciousness, which we can talk about later, but that's the first such a th such theory, that, to my knowledge, because it connects squarely the phenomenology of experience with the phenomenology of quantum information. 